Hey guys, welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we are going to build this awesome do-it-yourself arcade joystick. Let's get started. We're going to start out by opening up this acrylic panel and basically it's an entire kit as far as uh, the enclosure to house your control panel and yes my son is helping me out on the unboxing thanks Landon be sure you can give him a thumbs up or a comment below now we're going to move on to the kit which includes the joysticks all the arcade buttons and wires and encoder everything that we need to install it into the case so we'll just take a quick look at the contents let's go ahead and speed it up there's the buttons there's the ball for the joystick wires the encoder, the cable that goes from the encoder to the Raspberry Pi, back plastic pieces, and of course the joystick or controller. Now we'll peel the plastic off the acrylic cover. And yes, mine was slightly damaged. Everything's fine. Got it taken care of with the seller, so no problem. We'll take the plastic off the bottom side. Now we'll take the suction cups out of this plastic package. And we'll go ahead and mount it to the bottom of the case. You may want to put this on at the beginning of your build. I chose to. Uh, it does make it a little bit of, of a problem when you go to move this thing around because it keeps wanting to stick very well to the desk but at any rate I went ahead and chose to install it now this part is totally optional I have printed out these sheets which I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in doing the same but basically these sheets have uh, all the artwork or text that you need for your buttons and I used regular paper here. I don't recommend that. I recommend using uh, the labels. Uh, basically what we're going to do is pop the cap off. you got to be very careful. I used a small jeweler screwdriver. Pop the cap off and take the pieces that I cut out and stick it to the inside of the button. Now again you probably want to use the sticky labels or put a little dab of glue on there to hold it in place otherwise they'll slide around which I noticed later you just pop it in yep and we'll put it into the button and it just kinda snaps in you may have to apply a little bit of force to get it in there we go and everything's good Now we'll go ahead and install the button into the case. The top panel, we'll screw the back piece in to secure it. You want to make sure that you line up the words or artwork that's on the button and then tighten it down. And of course right here is a reference sheet that comes with the, the printout. So you can see where the buttons go. It's just a recommendation. You can set it up however you want. But I went ahead and kept it similar to the Super Nintendo layout. You just screw these little pieces on and tighten it down. This part takes a little bit of time, but it's not that bad. And now that all the buttons are secured to the control panel, we'll go ahead and put the joystick on. So just 
kind of figure out where the holes line up and then we'll go ahead and put a screw through it and go ahead and put the nuts on to secure it do that for all four each corner there we go We'll go ahead and tighten it with a Phillips head screwdriver. And we'll go ahead and put the little cover in for the joystick. And of course, screw on the ball for the tip of the stick. You may want to hold the middle piece in while you're twisting it to tighten it down. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and put the buttons on the side. I chose to put player one and player two on the side because those buttons aren't going to get pushed very often. You can lay yours out however you want, but that's just how I chose to do mine. And after you do that, now it's time for the wiring. Now, if you look real closely here, you'll see it makes a little crown picture. The red wire goes in the lower left of the crown, the yellow on the top, and then the other two are just the black wires or ground wires. Now, if you get a different set of buttons than what uh, I have here, which again, I'll put a link below on exactly what I used here, but in the case where you can't find them or it's a different layout, uh, take a close look at the manufacturer's layout in the sheet that they sent you. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Red wire in the lower left of the crown picture that's etched into the bottom of the button. And then put in the ground wires. And you just repeat this process for all the buttons. Pretty easy. And we'll do the same for the buttons on the side, the player one and player two. Now here's the USB encoder. And what we're going to do is take all the wires and plug them in. Uh, this is where the USB cable gets plugged in. That then goes to the Raspberry Pi. And now we're just going to go through each of the individual wires and just plug them in, just like that. Might have to apply a little pressure there to make sure it's secure. There we go. And we'll go ahead and fast forward through all of these and go ahead and plug in all the buttons. It doesn't matter which port that you plug it into on there as long as it's, you know, on the right hand side here. Go ahead and plug them all in. Like so. And now we'll plug in the joystick cable. Like so. And then we'll plug it into the encoder. Just over here on the far right hand side. Just pop it in. And we'll do the same for the other two buttons, player one, player two, on the base of the case. And plug the USB cable in. Now I chose to put Velcro on the bottom of my encoder board. It's up to you what you want to use. You could use uh, double-sided sticky tape. But just in case I need to remove it, I thought Velcro would probably be a good idea. So now we'll just affix it to the bottom of the case. And we'll put everything together like so. We'll go ahead and put the screws in. And once we do this, well, we're pretty much done. We'll 
do a quick check, make sure everything seems fine. Buttons all work. All right. Joystick. Yep. It's now the moment of truth. Okay, here we have a Super Pie case. I'll put a link up above where you can take a look at that if you're interested and looks like everything's good we'll go ahead and set up the controls we're gonna press up down left right start select a b x y left shoulder right shoulder now I'm gonna hold down the button for each of these other buttons that I don't have on the arcade controls until we get to the hotkey. Once we get to the hotkey, I'm going to hit the select key and just press a button and now our controller is set up. Alright, so now let's test it out. This video was captured on a MyGeeka video capture device plugged directly into the Raspberry Pi. I'll leave a link up above if you're interested in learning more about that. But one thing I want to mention is it's hard to play four-way games such as Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Frogger, and so forth on an eight-way controller. And the way I corrected that particular issue is I attached a device that was 3D printed and designed here at Wagner's Tech Talk that makes switching between an eight-way and a four-way very easy. This is what it looks like. So basically you just take these little plates or little inserts and you can switch between an eight-way or a four-way or even a two-way. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in that. And that completes our build. Everything was successful. The games play wonderfully. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. Again, take a look in the description below. Thank you.